Hi, everyone. Um, I will discuss survey research today. I actually would like to reflect on the exercise I gave you about 10 days ago. You did a good job, and I would just like to explain um, some of the errors that appeared in that survey and how to correct them. So I will share my screen with you now. So take a look at the survey and see some some errors that I detected it and I actually created those errors intentionally because I wanted you to see them as I feel like the best way to learn how to um, create a good questionnaire with no errors is to see what are some of the common errors that appear in a survey. So let's take a look at it. The survey started with this question, what is your gender? So we had two categories offered, male and female. What is problematic about it? First of all, what about those people who were born as females and now they identify themselves as, as males? How are they going to respond to this question? So in other words, this question would be confusing to them. That is why it is better to ask a question what is your biological sex? And aside from offering male and female, offer just one more category, other, and let them identify themselves. Another thing is don't start with demographic questions. They are boring. Leave them for the end of your survey. Instead, start with engaging questions. Try to make those respondents want to answer your survey questions. So ask them something interesting, make them interested in your survey. So leave those demographic questions for the end of your survey. Another question that we have on the list is, what is your age? Well, let's think about it. Um, a person was born in July and that person is now has turned 24 in July 2019. That person will turn 25 this year. So what will that person answer? Am I going to say 24 or 25? So right and this is important because you want to make sure what, what if you are trying to identify specific cohorts so that age can determine whether they belong to this cohort or another whether they are Generation Z or Millennials. So that's why I want to be specific. So let's say you're going to ask them instead, what was your age on your last birthday? So this person will answer 24 because they turned 24 in July 2019. Right. Another question, what is your race? So what was problematic about it? First of all, um, not all categories are listed here. And if you want to see all the categories that we need to have, when we ask a question here in the U.S., what is your race? Then it's just best for you to go to census website, go to census website, see all the categories that are listed there and incorporate them into your survey. Another thing is there's this spelling error. What is your race? So, um, make sure that you don't have any spelling errors as they can confuse your audience. They can actually confuse your respondents, right? Another question on the list is what is your major? And we have several categories here, such as psychology, nursing, journalism, engineering, religion. This list is not exhaustive. So there are many other majors. Why don't we have them on the list? Well, so we should have them. And even if we believe that we have all those majors listed, still add that category other and let your respondents type in their response because you might not have an exhaustive list, even if you do your best to list all the majors. Another question is, what is your class standing? And first of all, uh, yours, so there is a spelling error in the question. It, there's supposed to be why. Uh, freshman, sophomore, sophomore is not spelled correctly. And of course, you're a graduate student, so 
what answer would you circle considering that you're not listed there? So make sure to create an exhaustive list as well. Uh, the next question on the list is what is your GPA? I would first suggest to spell out um, GPA. So spell it out and you can put GPA abbreviation in parentheses. Also, see, look at those, uh, look at the numbers. 4.0, 3.5, 3.0. So what about those whose GPA is 3.75? Which group they belong to? Are they going to circle 3.5 or 4.0? Um, we need to provide like categories, let's say from 3.59 to 4.0, and then those who have a GPA of 3.75 would circle that category. Another thing is, Try to be consistent. People get used to responding in a specific way. They, are, they, they get used to a certain pattern. And in this case, if you start with low points, such as, let's go back to this question, what is your class standing? So you started with the lowest point, freshman, continued with sophomore, junior. So do that throughout the survey because they will follow this pattern. So instead of starting with 4.0, start with under 2.0, okay? Like you did with the next question, let's say, what are your weekly earnings less than 200? So you kind of start with, with the lowest point. What was problematic about this question? Let's identify a few issues. First of all, what about those who don't earn any money? What are they going to select? So are they going to select less than 200? Just provide that option, zero earnings. Mm. Another thing is, um, if you look at, let's say, if you look at the categories, you will see that they're not mutually exclusive. It should be from 200 to 299, from 300 to 399. So if you look at these categories, what happens to those people who earn $300? Are they going to circle number two or number three? So we want to make sure not to confuse our respondents. So those, um, instead of, these categories, we need to create categories that are mutually exclusive. So people who belong to one category, they don't belong to any other categories. So from 200 to 299, from 300 to 399, etc. Another thing is, um, Another question, so we're kind of now, okay, you, you asked some demographic data that is supposed to be actually at the end of your survey, and now you're proceeding to your survey. You are asking those questions. You're really interested, um, uh, your, your respondents to answer. And you're, you start with a statement such as, now we would like to ask you some questions about alcohol consumption. And then you ask them a question, do you drink alcohol, smoke cigarettes? So first of all, you just told them that you would ask them questions about alcohol consumption. So why are you asking them questions about smoking cigarettes as well? Um, another thing is the question you just asked, do you drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes? It's a double-barreled question. So you, you, you need to create two questions instead of this one. Um, what are they going to respond? What if they drink alcohol and don't smoke cigarettes? Or what if they um, smoke but don't drink? Like, how are they going to respond to this question? For that reason, you, you really need to split this question into two. So this is double barrel question, meaning that you're asked two questions, not one. Um, another question, in a typical week, how often do you drink alcohol? Now we have several categories here. Once a week, one to two times a week, two to three times a week, three to four times a week, five to six times a week, every day. This is completely fine. The only problem, I mean, starting this way, like you start with the lowest point as we mentioned, right? 
So you start with the lowest point and then you go to like more and more alcohol, right? And, but the problem here is, again, these categories are not mutually exclusive. So it shouldn't be one to two times a week. If you ask, if, if this is, if you offer them this item, one to two, this option one to two times a week, then your next option should be three to four times a week, right? So you want to make sure that you are giving them mutually exclusive categories. So the person who drinks two times a week will not be able to circle both, but that person needs to circle only one answer. This is really critical for every survey. Now, another problem that we have is with question 10. When you drink alcohol, how much on average do you usually drink? One to two drinks, three drinks, four drinks, five to six, more than six drinks. So you see, this is a little odd. If you're providing categories such as, you know, from one to two drinks, why your, um, your next question, should, your next item should be three to four drinks. So provide that as their option, like one to two, three to four, five to six, more than six drinks. So that would be a way to go. And finally, question 11. Please state your level of agreement with the following statements. So now we have four or five statements. I drink to ease relations with the opposite sex. I drink to relax. I drink to feel more self-confident. I don't drink to overcome my shyness. I drink alcohol to deal with feelings of despair. Um, what problems do we have? First of all, number four is negative. So this should be changed. You need to state instead, I drink to overcome my shyness. We talked about starting with the lowest point, And I also mentioned in class, when we talk about Likert type scale, it's actually good to start with strongly disagree. And in this case, you need to start with strongly disagree and then you go further to you know, strongly agree. The third statement has the agreement scale in the opposite direction. You need to be consistent. You see, you started here with strongly disagree, but you started here with strongly disagree with all other, um, in all other cases, you started to strongly agree. So you need to be consistent. And again, I would suggest starting with strongly disagree and ending with strongly agree. Finally, your final item, I drink alcohol, final statement, I drink alcohol to deal with feelings of despair. Very important, important. What is very important doing here? So if you provided uh, these answers, strongly disagree, disagree, then you need to be consistent throughout the service. So it's not about being important. You need to have strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, and strongly agree with that. So that is all about this survey. I hope uh, this was helpful because what I want you to do is, um, as I mentioned, Danielle, she's working on a survey and she really needs your feedback. So I want you to get her in your groups, your, uh, the groups that you've been working in for your final project. I want you to get her in groups and by March 31st, midnight, I want you to look at Danielle's survey, which is posted on Blackboard. So if you go to Go to, uh, go to documents and then click on exercises, scroll down. You will find this exercise survey questionnaire. Click on it and download this survey. Uh, look at potential errors that Danielle has in her survey or just let her know if you find that something is not really clear. Um, take your notes, discuss them with your group members, and then post your suggestions on Blackboard under, so you will go to discussion board, scroll down, and there is survey questionnaire, click on it, and each group should post their answers here. So make sure to do complete this assignment by 
March 31st at midnight. So that is all. Good luck and stay safe. <laughs>